Last time on Lawful Stupid. Okay, so you arrive at the laboratory. Oh, oh, I'm so glad you could make it. The dragon scale that I touched, I didn't seem normal. He reaches into his bag and he pulls out the red one and he hands it to you. It begins to to glow once again. I just don't know what this is. This is new to me. Hey, Will, can you make Eshi come out of the pen so he can stop talking? Eshi, come on out here and show yourself to this nerd. Eshi begins to materialize. The scale begins to flicker once more. Ugh, Miss B is going to like pinch the bridge of her nose. Doctor, fix Miss B! How did you, wh- where did this come from? To dumb it down, I picked up the pen. We need to find the, the other scales. Hi, Misery. Misery's voice changes. No time now. We must, we, follow me. I want you all to listen to me and listen closely. Something is going on here, and I think it has something to do with you three. The dragon scales are a must. We need to find those first. Go to the tower if you get a chance. Sooner than later. What did uh, Dr. Enoch tell you? She turns you around to face her, and you remember this. Look back, but don't turn around. Like, look over your shoulder, kind of thing. That's what... Do you do that? Yeah, look over your shoulder, yeah. You look over your shoulder, and you see in the va- the far, far distance, it is extremely tall, white tower reaching up into the clouds. And you see behind you this large white tower going up into the clouds. Miss B. Miss B turns around like, what? (laughs) Did did you see it? Yes. What? What? How's... She turns around proper, like, to face the tower where she saw it without looking over her shoulder. You see nothing but green, beautiful pastures and open blue skies. How is that there? It's not there now. She How leans is- leans in real close, like to draw you in. Yes. Miss B will lean down because I'm pretty sure she's taller than Misery. Yes. She says, Magic! Obviously. I don't know what else to tell you. That's this. It, that's just that's how pretty much the long and short of it. He he, you he lets those he wants to find him to find him, but that's the, how they find him. How does one travel there if you can't head towards it? Oh, you can head towards it. You gotta look over your shoulder, turn around and walk for a while, then turn your back, look over your shoulder, make sure you're going in the right direction, head towards that way for a while. Or you're the backwards walking man stunning people. I did not mean this to be that. You can backwards talk the talk, but can you backwards walk the walk? (laughs) You better if you want to get to that tower, but seriously, that's how you do it. It sounds ridiculous. You're not saying walk backwards. You yes. say my thing. Walk back. Well, you would look over your shoulder and then you'd walk forward a little bit. The tower is, is approximately uh, a day's journey behind you. Whichever way you at look. All, at all times? At all times. To- no. If you begin to walk, it is, is approximately a day's journey behind you. It will always appear behind you. If you continue walking backwards, you will reach it eventually. If you turn around to face it, the moment you do, it is now moved. About a day's journey behind you. So what if I walk backwards to, like, see it over my shoulder, right? Perfect. But then I decide to stop and then continue my day moving forwards. Can I still continue back where I started and continue walking backwards? Maybe where you left off? Yeah. If you take it still. within like three steps and then turn around and walk forwards and then save that state. So if I need to get there quickly, I can turn around. There is no quick save. <laughs> so I have to walk a whole day backwards. No matter there. what. <laughs> can, can I can I sprint backwards? I'm you can fast. run as fast as you can backwards. <laughs> I have 40 feet of movement. It does not specify which direction. <laughs> backwards head turn. Good point. I can take the dash action backwards 80 feet in six seconds. 
I could eat those miles up. You, you said I believe in you. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm saying I'm going right now. See, I'll catch you. Uh, and and then a group of students like begins to walk toward your group, um, and she kind of says, "Good luck. I'll be here. Don't bring the, anything of this up when you come back. We we mustn't talk about it for a while. I don't know okay. who might be watching." Goodbye. Uh, I think Devin weird. has to think about the repercussions of her conversation before we talk about it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I guess Miss B will just kind of lead her boys around the garden so that they ha- they can talk without being around anybody. I All I'm saying is I can make that trip in half a day and I want answers. <laughs> How would we explain our absence from the K and G? They expect us to. They do. said. They said. They encouraged us to go do side missions. Well, we went to go follow up a lead. Turned out it was a wild goose chase. Now we're back. Oh, we still have to file the paperwork. Well, I've never done that in my life. Yeah, I'm never going to. I've, You're lucky I, that I'm here. That hasn't so, started. That, that sounds like a real you problem. It's that me. sounds like a Mrs. B problem. <laughs> That sounds like a. It's like my job is to get there very fast. Your job is to do the paper. Hi. Hmm. You guys know what I think. I fucking hate this place. I mean, maybe we go live at this tower now, right? Like it seems yeah, very, very, very safe. I watched those those smiley sleepers for a while, and you know what they never did? Moonwalk. So probably yeah. be safe. Did you know there. what? We found a weakness. Good points. <laughs> That's how you go in the team. Back, in the backwards <laughs> tub. Has anybody tried to walk backwards into the bubble? I bet they fucking have. I haven't. doubt it. It seems like something they overlooked. Yeah. Now, now Ooh, we're so really we're just burning through these mysteries, Devin. You're just mad we got Not it so fast. <laughs> I hate it. I hate everything about it. It's bullshit, and I don't like this misery as a double agent with um, out an organization. Organized Does name even. She just serves the man. Fuck that. Even though her loyalty seemed to align with our own more in this scenario, I too refuse to trust the double agent. Yeah, it seems seems uh, I don't I don't like it. Cause like if you'd betray them, why why wouldn't you betray me? If there's gonna be one double agent, it's gonna be me. Yeah, and I might be a triple agent. I may be a quadruple agent by the time you I'm can't done. see. I'm not sure that you remember which side you're Look, on. Look, hey, well, you can see what was what's the Roman numerals on my on my patch say? It says three. I'm a I'm a triple agent. <laughs> he does have. Uh, a point. I, I, it's kind of cute. <laughs> no. It's kind of cute. Okay, all right. It's hard to be mad at the favorite child, right? Like mm-hmm. the kind of dumb one that you like a lot because they're always cute. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Once again, kinda. Hey, uh, mm-hmm. I'm running backwards. Bye. Why don't we Bye. collect as much as we can about the dragon scale information before we go? Have yeah, everything no, that the KNG has that, on it. Remember that part where you talked about going to a library? Yes. We know. We know. We already know more than the top KNG right scientists. Uh, I want the files, the mission status of all the things that the agents done to get those three. Maybe you Ms. could B, help us hint tell- out at the rest of them. Miss Miss B, if the real reason that you don't want to go is because you get headaches anytime anybody talks about things that are relevant to the main plot of the story, then that's fine. We'll go without you. <laughs> but Miss B's gonna come, die. <laughs> yeah, if we leave you alone, you will die instantly. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, the, the statue demons will get you. Hey, no, I for real. Um, I think it's I think it's a good idea that um, Miss B, you go to the library, figure out uh, whatever information you think we need to have going into uh, um, the scary mumbo jumbo that we're doing. Uh, I've got some leads I'm gonna follow up on. Um, Lucian, you can babysit your mama or walk backwards to the tower. 
But you should probably wait on us for this hour, but how long is it gonna take you to get the information that you need, do you think, Miss B? Yeah, I think so what we're gonna do is this is gonna kinda of be like a mini sh- uh, downtime thing where you're all kinda of going off to do your own thing. So if you want to seek out information, this is your chance, kind of where you're kinda of, if you're if I'm understanding you guys are splitting up to go find an avenue for more information or gather some whatever it is. Correct. So yes, I think that we three pronged approach it. This is what I this is what I think is Scott Chainsaw, not Lucian the boy idiot. I think that I think that William is using his contacts, and I think he's using his, his relationships and his and his prowess with people to try to get some information. I think this B is doing it the hard way at the library, studying and becoming actually proficient and knowledgeable. And I think that Lucian is trying to find is, is consulting with with you know other priests and clergymen trying to find like the religious answer here as like the dragons and what that means from like a, like a organized religion scripture yeah. how does this play to the big picture standpoint and i think that if we go those three ways then by the time that we're done we we'll, should know more than anybody <laughs> about this these dragons What say you, my fellow podcasters, teammates, and friends? I'm all oh, Mitch, I zoned out for part of it, but it sounds good from the That's part I did here. <laughs> Super <laughs> duper fair. Wayne, I heard, did you listen I to any of the words boring, that I said? Boring, boring thing. <laughs> and then I heard Miss Beagle's library. Boring, boring thing. <laughs> That Made was that up. was the thing that stuck out as interesting was Miss B goes to the library by herself. <laughs> okay, fuck. Yeah, I guess yeah, what yeah, I said yeah. was boring. Yeah, 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 that's the highlight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I guess um, I'll go fuck myself and you guys can do whatever the fuck you want. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize Damn. we were getting to that type of podcasting. Hey, we're um, Spicy time. <laughs> No. I guess that's fine. Okay. Uh, this is how it feels yeah, to be me, you... Shane. <laughs> is it? All the time. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> no, I'm good with that. That's what I was alluding tell, to. Tell me what he said. <laughs> tell me what he said. Uh, the Mr. Eager's the library. William uses his contacts to... Dang it, you got it. ...gather more information. You want to keep doing this game? Yeah. I didn't zone out. No, I zoned out during this year. That's where I will admit I zoned out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she, goes, she, goes, she goes to the library... Uh, well, uh, she, she, she was, was an interest. She was, she was maintaining okay, interest well, long well. enough to hear about her part, and then decided she didn't care. As it was slowly <laughs> fading out as we talked about Williams. Now that makes sense. Rock and roll, rock and roll, rock and roll. Uh, yeah, she was on basically on, on standby mode, listening for a keyword. The keyword mm. was Miss B. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys uh, can do that, and any um, we, we can do ladies first because I'm a respectable gentleman. Do you want to roleplay these scenes? Is that what you're saying, Devin? Yeah, let's hear about this library. Yeah, I'll go back to the library again. We're doing a role play of all three of these scenes. Here we go. Okay. So, Miss B, you head back into uh, the school, back down into the depths of the school, are able to make your way to the pretty sizable uh, library that is positioned here, KNG headquarters. Sweet. I'm going to go where I wasn't allowed to go before. Cause that Ooh. seems like a good spot. Yes, and Rank so up. the KNG has these five different levels um, that coincide with the level that you were given as a KNG agent. And so, one, two, three, obviously, is the one, two, three floors. The fourth level is for the X, which is level five, and the high floors. And you can tell there's a lot less books, really, even from the bottom floor. But that is for the the level ten or the X, or excuse me, the um, it was the V and then the X um, ranked members. Cool beans. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to start at level three because I feel like that's where I might be able to find something. And then if I see anyone heading up to level four, I might flag them down and be like, hey, important person. <laughs> yeah, and I will say, what are you intentionally trying to look for here? What is your intent while you peruse? Um, just any information about the dragons, dragon scales, or even if I can get a hold of, like, past reports. I don't know if that'd be in the library. I feel like it would be, but I don't know. If they need the information available to their agents about things, then it should be a good spot. Um, um 
Roll a history check for me. Or no, not, no, it wouldn't be that. It would be a, if, if I'm trying to like give her some level of introduction based on like what she's looking for based on a role. Is that so? A, it, the uh, way that I would play this scenario, and Dwayne, I think you probably play it the same way. Uh, would be an investigation check to try to find I, the most relevant materials. Yes, okay. And then it would just be time it would take to consume those materials. So okay. based on how she does on the on the investigation check, you can do it a, a, a few different ways. And this is just DM talk for a second. Uh, if if you if it's like a MacGuffin kind of situation where you determine that she really should find out more mm. or less the answer for you and narratively, then you make the DC determine how quickly she's able to determine it. Um, if it's yeah, something not, that it's not if, but how long? Yeah, ex- it could be one. Or if you want, if you want to do like a, if you have multiple levels of information prepared, then you can set. How, how much she learns yeah, on yeah, yeah. DC, so you can either gate it by time, and that determines how, how how good the role is, or you can do it by quality or quantity of information. However, and or like, if she rolls below a certain threshold, you can give her misinformation if you want to. That's just untrue. Um, that's your call. You can uh, lie to her. Let's as do the, it as the DM. Let's uh, do it. All but, right, investigation. But, but, but it's not going to be any sort of like history or intelligence. Well, gotcha. Makes sense. That'll be a 14. Pretty good. Oh, hey there. What can I help you find today? Oh, hey, Kermit the Librarian. And uh, uh, this guy walks into you. Frederick. And you know him for it's Frederick the, the Librarian. He wears these. Look at Avon. You're the, like the best fucking She's player. She's very good. Campaign. I had to pull my notes <laughs> to begin. Uh, he wears these black robes, glasses. He's very hunched, um, but he's very lively. Um, loves knowledge. He, he's, he's, that's obviously why he is in the position he's in. How, uh, uh, how is Summer doing? Uh, she's doing well, and Miss B will just, I don't know, flip her hand around, and I guess Summer will appear on her shoulder because oh, she can bring beautiful. the familiar in and out. <laughs> and she's doing well. Um, where's Hoppy? Oh, he's you know, around here somewhere, I'm sure. If she finds Hoppy at any point, she'll pick him up. And return him back to <laughs> Frederick. Okay. Otherwise, <laughs> um, I actually came to look for some information. She'll oh, show you came her to the right new place. fancy badge. <laughs> uh, she'll show her new rank three badge. And be like I- I'm looking for information about the dragons. Hmm. And what are you looking for in particular? Uh, perhaps the dragon scales. Any stories? If there's uh previous reports from past agents that might be around here or is that somewhere else oh we yeah we do have old reports if you want to um, look over here and it kind of walks you over to a section where it's not so much so many books that are that are outlined there and it said just looks like files that have been put away alphabetically and he starts uh, rummaging through them um, in the in the D's obviously and he pulls one out <laughs> he says um <laughs> I mean, you could have put under S for scale, <laughs> but she went with D. Yo, yo, let me put the D one back. Yo, let's look in the S for scales. Um, <laughs> let's see, S for scales. For stale. Oh, too far. Let's see. Uh, seaweed. Oh, yeah, too far. Um, uh, so, so, uh, sail, uh, schlong, uh, <laughs> sappy scales. And he, and he says, uh, I don't know, maybe you'll find something here. And he hands it over to you. To read. Does it look like a thick file or it, a thin file? It is thick with two C's. Just is it a hardback or a softback book? It's actually it, it, yeah, it it's depends. a thick hardback. Uh, no, this is a very skimpy file. It's very unimpressive. <laughs> it started off as a softback, but it's, it's moving <laughs> yeah, just slowly getting harder down its spine. <laughs> Should have had that be a book. Right. Um, you know, it, th- there's not much in it. Um, you open okay. it up. And there's like handwriting you can barely read um, in oh there. God, a doctor. Dr. Ryan. Yeah, barely read. <laughs> and it says um, scales not found, uh, rumors that they've been moved, uh, sources of great power left behind, remnants uh, of items that have been affected <clears throat> have been detained and quarantined for further study. 
Is there anything that like mentions any magical effects that the scales had? Because I, as a Bond, know as a player, dragon scales, dragons with different colors do different things. But I know Miss B doesn't know that. But out of curious, do the area effects greatly magical? But like how? Oh, okay. You're looking. Uh, let me put that back. And so he puts that file back for you. And again, it's not like locked up or anything. He just kind of he does it to be nice. He says, "Follow me." And he takes you over to back to where the books are and pulls out um, a, an old book. Um, hard, it, it's a hardback. Pretty thick and, and for reals this time. And he opens up to a section that kind of has this middle circle um, with, with some uh, design on it. And then around that are six other circles. And they're all shaped with those like main colors. Um, and you would think, oh, from the scales. They kind of represent the gods with a bigger middle. <clears throat> he says, uh, uh, this, this is kind of what we've got for, um, you know, all the little gods and what they represent. And maybe it's got something that you're looking for in here. I'll take anything. And so I don't know if there now is something particular you're looking for. We can do another roll. Uh, yeah, wanna... sure. Um... I guess because it relates to the gods and this bee is not as knowledgeable about them, uh, she'd be like, what kind of magics they have and um, see if anything seems kind of important there. Okay. <clears throat> so as you begin to skim through these pages and you're kind of looking at kind of just some of the, the stories people have written about these gods... And you were going to read the following, and I can add these somewhere else later on, kind of about the generic descriptions of the gods. Hephaestus, and, and sorry everyone, this is kind of me just ranting for a moment about the gods. So if you're into this, cool. If not, you can skip forward now. Hephaestus. When people think of power, they think of the element of fire. The same power that can cook delicious food in an oven is the same that can destroy entire cities and forests. It comes down to the wielder. Hephaestus is the embodiment of power. His followers can almost be considered zealots, rising to power by using power. Might makes right is their central theme. True followers of Festus can never let a flame extinguish without paying homage to Festus. To do so puts a divide between servant and god. Pagoma. <clears throat> Pagoma can be treacherous, or people can be treacherous. Living among others taints the sanctity of a clan, of a people. In order to thrive, you must know your tribe and stick with that tribe. Pagoma was said to be doubtful of her brothers and sisters, always preferring to be alone. Those dedicated to Pagoma also practice high level of disdain for those outside of their clan. Even other clans who worship Pagoma rarely join together. The exception is the festival of the moons. The element of water is chosen by Pagoma. Water can be life-giving or a massive destroyer, just like people. Talam. There, be, there could be nothing else if it wasn't for Talam. Without a base, the oceans, trees, light, dark, people, it would mean nothing. Talam loves nature, and her followers follow suit, praying daily and giving thanks for the small things in life. Talam is also a god of grandeur, as evidenced by mountains, volcanoes. She represents might and protection, choosing to avoid conflict if possible. Followers of Talam will also exhibit great patience under, until the right moment. Chinook, the wily god. Chinook's personality is what made the winds, ever-changing and shifting. Chinook is the goddess of speed. If it... If it it wasn't good enough that people should walk on Earth. She thought they should experience the wondrous heights of the heavens, making some races with that variability. Wisdom is another tenet held by the followers of Chinook. Though they are flighty, it is not for a lack of wisdom. Some of the oldest creatures serve Chinook, some forgotten and some hidden. Nova, the oldest of the gods. She is the closest representation to Uni that there is, a peace-loving, justice-providing healer of gods. Her followers often tout themselves as the most important, on the flip side, most followers are extremely humble and servant-minded, willing to help as often as they can, even at their own expense. <laughs> and then the last entry, Kinos. Another loner as far as the gods go. Perhaps the most closely in a relationship with Pagoma, still seeking to be alone. Kinos is awake when the other gods might be sleeping, keeping watch over the darker places in life. Kinos provides rest and the shadows. But this also provides opportunity for the worst things to happen. Worshippers of Kinos are credited with being liars, thieves, and deviants. Worshippers of Kinos thrive in the dark, whatever that might mean. And so you kind of gain some other insights, but that, that is the, the crux of what you get 
from this book in relation to the gods and what they represent. Cool beans. I like all that info dump. <laughs> I'm doing like a fun little prayers for all the gods right now. Like, uh, Talum, give me patience. Chinook, make me swift. Mm. Kinos, grant them rest. Is Chinook a reference to the military helicopter? It is. It's a helicopter. I was asking. My, my, sweet, my sweet dual rotor baby. I just love the <laughs> Chinook. Yep. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I was asking if that's so, what he was thinking. I guess with that general information, trying to guess like which scales are to which gods sound kind of interesting. Because <laughs> um, then maybe like those ideals and magics might correlate to um, what magical effects might happen in those areas. You're not wrong. I'm not going to give you the answers, but you're not wrong. Oh, I know. I'm giving you my thoughts. Um, I love it. Otherwise, uh, she'll go back to Frederick after, like, doing all her information gathering. And she'll be like, is there anything else that I can have access to? Uh, well, not without your level five. Sorry, I can't let you up there. I, as much as I want to help, I just rules are rules. I completely understand. Thank you very much. No, thank uh, you. <laughs> she'll she'll put everything away. Think about it for a second. Like look up and be like, hmm. But then walk away to go finish up her paperwork for now. Thank goodness somebody's doing it. One thing we love at Lawful Stupid, among the other things we love at Lawful Stupid, is spreading the word about your business. Or maybe you want to tell your sweet, sweet grandma that you love her for the world to hear. We want to give you that chance. If you're a business and want to get your services on the air, or just want to tell a loved one a personal message, head on over to lawfulstupid.org forward slash message in a bottle. There you can take around 250 words to say what you want. Business ads are $20. Personal ads are 10 Tell the world what you have to hear with Lawful Stupid's message in a bottle. William. Yeah. Over to you, bud. I I probably should have prepared something. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I want to go to, um, man, I got, there's two, two things I want to do, but I'll, I'll just go with the first. Um, William, at one point, got a little side job, got a little, little thing he, he was doing. Um, and I want to go check on the ward. Like a hospital ward? Is that what you're talking about? Um, no, the creepy underground ward. Um, Oh, the, okay, like the, where they're holding the assets yeah, type thing. Yeah, and where the Jeremiah is. Person. Jeremiah, yes. With it, so his name is, real name is Jeremiah, but he is. He introduced uh, me to Kane. Should be Kane. Yes. Yes, I want to go visit Kane. The person I knew about. Perfect. Without, um, without issue. You are able to, you know, you take the elevators down because it's, it's much lower um, underground, a few levels underground. Oh. And you see him there, um, sort of like twisting his blade <laughs> on his finger. He's got okay. it like on the floor. He's in that, that catwalk out. You can see he's in that circular dome. It's the only light that's showing up um, in this area currently. Mm. Uh, you make your way out across it. And as you walk, again, as you walk by, you have those doors on your left and right. Some have the the window painted over. Some are just empty, seemingly empty. Um, and some do have bright lights in them. Uh, I approach Kane and say, I'm here for my rounds. Oh, yes. It's good to see you again. Um, 
no, there's been nothing of note that I can tell you. Uh, but here is your today's work. And he hands you a clipboard. Uh, it's got a list of about like seven different uh, rooms, room numbers you're going to go and check on. Uh, is KNG803 on that list? Yes, it is on this one. All right, good. I uh, so William, uh, dutifully to maintain appearances, goes and does the other six, um, and then approaches uh the girl, the creepy darkness girl, the ring girl. Yes. Yeah, so as you, so this is the one that has like immense amounts of light in it, but yeah, she's yeah, still yeah, sitting over in a corner, uh, hands like curled dark. up, rocking yeah. back and forth. Uh, now yeah if I if I recall recall correctly and correct me if I'm wrong um even though she's being fucking sprayed with light she still has like a, a dark corner yes yeah? so there's still yes like sm- yeah and there's still, it's, it's like there's light from all directions okay. but she still has a shadow somehow yeah okay cool 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 uh let's see uh I knock on the the, the cell it's it it's time for your feeding And the thing kind of like tilts its head sideways without letting its hair show. And then back to the other side. Without letting its hair show or face Like show? the hair is a very ring it's style. St- okay. Just, yeah, it's covering her face. Got it. Yes. Both ways. And then... You know that creeps me out when you do that, right? You don't have to keep doing it. I'm already... I already have the heebie-jeebies when you exist, so it's fine. And she... She, like, looks up to, like, point at a light. And one of them... Like goes out. Yeah, don't do that. That's bad. That's creepy. Don't don't get real upset. And she she you see her like begin to almost like where her she's standing, but she's bent over her spine, and she stands up, and then her whole body stands up, and like head falls yeah. forward. Yeah, you know what William does? He he like straightens his chest and his cape billows in the wind. Yeah, two of us can do that. And then um, she begins to kind of walk over to where you are because the shadow. Oh, William steps backwards a few steps. <laughs> you got me. You called my bluff. I'm no longer tough. Uh, okay, as you you get away from the door, yeah, you don't know what, what's going on in there anymore. Uh, I mean, I don't leave. I just take a step back because she's walking towards me. Oh, okay. Well, she's still she's still walking up to the door, and then her her visage yeah, of her creepy. hair being over her head. Is just staring at the window. Uh, uh, dear, did you ever give me a name for you? If you did, I forgot it, and I apologize. She takes a couple steps back. And then quickly throws her face up to the window, and it's smiling Oof. and glowing. Oh, 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 fuck. Hey, do you understand a word I'm saying? And you see her, like, screaming, but you can't hear anything. Uh, blink once for yes, two for no. And she's just, and it's just, like, still screaming. And then an alarm starts to go off. Okay. I didn't do that. And, and you hear some people running in, running in. And these people have this, these other KNG agents, presumably, have this giant light <laughs> picture. They, it's, like, as big as the window. And they, it, it turns and begins to, and a light beam shoots into this room right at the girl, and she almost shrinks down to a very small size and back to the corner. And they kind of push you out of the way. Uh, they mm-hmm. they open the door, keeping the light on this thing, and they go in and change the light bulb quickly, and then come out and shut that door. Uh, and and Kane comes over and he goes, "Hey, you can't mess with with the." With the assets like no, that. I'm not. I'm just having a conversation. Is that not allowed? No, it's not. Hmm. You just need to make sure it's there. The Fed. And walk away. Yeah, it's there. That seems like a good job. Um, can you, uh, you've got a moment. i got some questions. I've got like a homework assignment. I've got to knock down here. Yeah, go on. Yeah, how long has KNG been around? It's like a history project. Uh, I don't know, I guess a couple hundred years or so. Uh, and you've been around for most of that? Uh, 30, 40 years. Not super long. Not like 
Misery. Misery's been here longer than everybody. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Love's Company. That makes sense. Um, okay, well... Uh, listen, I, uh, I'm just... I'm a little... Yeah, I, I know I'm new to the place, and, you know, the new guy always does the dirty work yeah. and doesn't really understand everything, but... Um, kind of some sketch stuff going on there, Chief. Um, I don't know what you... I mean, this whole place is full of sketch things. Mm-hmm. But, like, really sketch. Like, you ever been on a train? <sighs> yeah, I don't... You think we'd come up with any other way to... I prefer to just walk. Walk back yeah. sometimes. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of the fortune telling wall or the fact that it's from like hell. Fortune telling wall? Oh, you know, the world you walk into and it tells your fortune. No, I, like I the don't future, know that. Future telling wall. You, I, 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 no one's done that. No, it's weird. It happened to me. Um, weird. Uh, okay, so. What was your, what was your fortune? Maybe, I, maybe I'll try that train next. Mostly just success. Um, oh, that's nice. Cu- curious though, but uh, no. what what are we doing? Because like, you eight oh three is weird, and she's like, you know, when you look at her, she's like, and her, you know, the face and the teeth and the weirdness. Yeah. Yeah, I can't sleep some nights. Yeah, same. It only took one time. Yeah, yeah, same. Uh, what what's that ordeal? Because. Now I've seen them there and out there. And he, like, motions to the outside world. So what? Uh, the, her creepy fucking face on other people. Oh, I, I... You're talking about the sleepers. No, I didn't know if you knew. I just... what I, yeah, well, I don't we, know where we're... We had a briefing earlier that they've... You know, these, these things. And so more assets are just getting out. That's what they are to me. Things that shouldn't be here, they're assets. And so we'll treat them as such. You don't know much more about the sleepers or where they came from or why the KNG is so keen on uh, committing homicide. Genocide, excuse me. Well, either way, (laughs) we'll get rid of them. Um, Do what you gotta do, right? (sighs) I think the point is restoring balance you know you you've heard of the blossoming by now yeah sure i've heard i've heard that song and dance the k and g is interested in figuring out what caused it how do we undo it and that's about it and then until then we we stop weird things from happening all the time hot Okay, um, well, this has been enlightening uh, and somewhat frustrating, Kane, but I suppose that's not your fault. Um, it put me in a hole, and I just do a good job of making sure nothing gets out of it with me. Wait, hey, when's the last time you killed your brother? Oh, man, it's been five years now. You're like due for another one of those, right? Yes, it's due pretty soon, yeah. Yeah, if, yeah. If you uh, if you need help next time around, you just uh, give me a bus. <laughs> if, if I need help, you're in trouble. <laughs> That's what I gotta say about that. Okay, well, it was a friendly gesture. You can just spit on. Yeah, it. no, fine. I get it. I, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. No, for no, 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 just, no, no, no. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Pretty dangerous. It's fine. Yeah, well, you know, I saw these fucking creepy things with these teeth, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, it can always a pleasure. It's always somewhat weird too, but hey, I appreciate it. Join the club. Good to see you again. See you next time. Always. Uh, I want to go back to my room. The fuck this place. This place is creepy as shit. It's a nightmare train all over again. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, and I want to talk to SG on my way out. I'm on, on my way back to the room. Um, what was that all about? I don't fucking know. What? What? And I've had it up to a fucking here. Okay. With well- people lying to me. And may and not telling me why fucking dragon scales glow when I touch them. First of all, if anything fucking glows when I touch it, I expect a goddamn fucking explanation for it. Okay, well, calm down a little bit there, bud. We got fiery tempers, but uh, you're letting yours run wild. I'm perfectly fucking calm, okay? Like, this place is just getting on my last fucking nerve. I've sold my soul to some bullshit devil. There's... 
There's a fucking old lady who feeds me fucking mind-bending cookies who works for some man in a tower that you can only see if you bend your neck a certain way. It's all very frustrating out of some storybook bullshit. And actually, I love you, but you don't have any fucking answers for me either. I, I pissed away a life of luxury for this. What the fuck? Listen, what are you good at? A fucking lying. Playing the game. Yeah, fuck. So what will we do? I, I you know, right now, it's, uh, fuck, fuck somebody up. That's play, a, play, I feel like no, that's a good option. Play the game. I don't know what's going on here either. Obviously, th there's something that we're all missing. Something we're all going to find out. And it may be th too late when we do. But there has to be a breaking point. It's not comforting. And she she steps, she comes out of, of you into her like physical form in your room. And I think in this room, she's even more of a physical person than she normally is. Because right, this is kind of all just oh, like for the sure. things you if have. If you remember, it's just a mock-up of the inside of the lamp. Right? Yes. Um, and she, she pours you a glass of your favorite brandy. And she brings it over and she hands it to you. And she says... Um, there's something with that scale. You know it, I know it. Yeah. Lucian knows it. And then Miss B, some, she knows it. Everyone knows it. Yeah. Dr. Ryan said we need to find the other ones. So we yeah, play, play the game. Yeah, you know, a game would be more fun if I had the rules, had all the information, or just, just fucked it to know who I'm playing with, right? I don't have any of that, and it's it's a just a bit fucking frustrating. And and William, knowing he's in this room alone, says, I, I've got a mom with a complex, and a little boy for a partner, and right now neither of them are doing me a whole lot of good. And it's very frustrating. But they have your best interests at heart, and they're in the same predicament as you. Remember that. Mm. Uh, uh, mm. And there's some re there's some reason the K and G needs you three. So we play the game. Keep your friends close. Keep your potentially enemies closer. And we'll have the upper hand. Mm. Now's not the time to lose your cool. Oh, you're just trying to make it fucking worse, aren't you, Reshi? Listen. We've been together so long that you don't know how to push my fucking button. Well, I feel like now's probably not the best time. You know what? Good fucking point. I know what time it is. You know, maybe Mrs. B isn't all bad. She did give me these wonderful slippers. See? The bright side of things. You have your brandy. It's it's a little yes. chill in here. And you have these nice slippers. Mm. Yeah, my feet are... The, so the, that bed cold. looks very comfortable. You're tired. Mm. It's just been a long, yeah, stressful good day. Yeah. Good point. Uh, so he unboxes... Or he, he... Not unboxes. He pulls out this, uh, this very nice box... That was beautifully gift wrapped by his wonderful friend uh, and, and compatriot mm -hmm. after being like just pissed. And he pulls out these wonderfully uh, crafted slippers and puts one on. It's warm, right? Because it's not the pair, it's mm -hmm. warm. It's like, oh, nice, all right. And then he puts on the second one. God, for motherfucker! Who the fuck designed these? Mrs. B! And the, the sound of squish is accompanied with an, a burst of flames around William as his body burst into flames. A pillar lifts off of him and around everything. And then as the flames reside, nothing on his clothes were burned. But he has this look of shock about him as he looks over to Eshi and she sits up and she says... I think I remember something. Jump over to Lucian. Oh, spooky, spooky. So, uh, the, 
<laughs> the nearest big town is gonna be Haven Bay, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be. You gonna make him? You gonna make him a boy? It's funny, man. It's funny. It's funny that Devin thought it was so funny. Zebra. I don't think it was that funny. I think it's funny that Devin thought it was so funny. Zebra gets me. Right. Uh, so, New York's big town is like Cave and Bay, right? Yes. Cool. So, it's Port Town, as we've talked about, we, we lifted the hotel, turned it so he could give William a sea view mm-hmm. early on. So, that would be like the nearest yep. like big church. Yes. Yeah. So Lucian is going to walk into that church. Now, I acknowledge that Lucian looks differently than the last time he may have. Well, not the last time he went to a church. Last time that he presented himself as a religious figure. Um, so his clothes are a little altered because the only way I know how to show character growth is by removing a character's sleeves. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so he's got he obviously his, his sleeveless monk robes and his little collar still, and his hair's down, and he's got a headband over his eyes, and it's very dusty, I imagine, all the time. Um, and <laughs> he's just gonna just walk right in, just gonna gonna walk right into the church, proud as you please, and he's gonna find the nearest priest, and he's just gonna be like, uh, "Excuse me, brother, um, I need you to find your bishop for me because I need to confess." Um, mm. certainly, brother. Let me, uh, let me grab him. Thank you. Um, and these, these guys are very nondescript, unimpressive, brown robes, uh, shaved heads, and they have, they all have, uh, like a two dot, and then below that a one dot. So it would make like a triangle shape, mm-hmm. so two dot, one dot. Um, and he goes and grabs another guy, very similar, portly man, um, and he says, Good day, how can I help you? Hey, good morning, Bishop. Uh, I just wish to confess. It's been a while, and, you know, priests confess to bishops. That's how we do. So if you want to, boop, pop on over to the... By the gods. And he, he like, touches those things <laughs> and then does it to you. Nope. Thank you very much. And let, let's have a sit. Do they have, like, confessional booths, or is it just, like, a... It's just open seats, okay. like, you know, like every New York movie where they go in and just look up at the thing. But you'll notice, like, there's, like, a dome shape, and it's what people believe that the gods look like and it's all of them here um but again in the middle there's like this sphere um that they're all kind of swimming around or moving around the six figures and just the sphere in the middle um and he says what what's got you weighted down brother uh well there's just some things that i have to confess to you um i am a part of a, a secret organization uh, that I'm not allowed to talk about. Uh, okay. Yep, not allowed to talk about it. But I've seen some things that uh, I need to confess to you and I need to discuss with you. Um, one thing that... Well, you know, that, that stays here. And I, it will take it to those who can bear the burden much better than we can. I, I thank you, Bishop. Uh, so, first of all, hey, the gods used to be dragons. That's nuts, so, huh? Mm. Yeah, and, yes. and, I, and yep. I found their scales... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. You what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. So, yeah, I've seen those. Those are real. Hey, uh, this other thing, my buddy, you know, Ashy, remember Ashy from the stories? Yeah, she lives in my buddy's fucking hey, pin. Look. Yeah, up there, you see her? She lives in a pin now, and I kick it with her, like, all the time. It's nutso. Anyway, um, so she touched the scale, and it lit up like it was freaking a holiday, man. It was... So that's going on. Um, um, hey, you know the sleepers? You know them? No. Ah, you're gonna, yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you don't wanna skip. What's a sleeper? No, 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 you, oh, you'll, see. <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. Uh, did, you, did you read the whole book? Did you skip to the end? I'll tell you later. One book. Uh, I don't. Anyway, so, hey. Are you okay? No. <laughs> he kind of no. puts a hand on your shoulder. It's gonna be okay. <sighs> Do you ever feel like you're a part of something so big that you can't even see yourself anymore? I think if you zoom far enough away from our tiny planet, 
It's almost like the gods could take and just crush that into a piece of paper and throw it into some desolate waste bin. So yeah, I feel pretty insignificant at times. What if I told you there was something out there bigger than that? That could fold the gods up like a piece of paper and put them in their waste bin? I would say now you're off your rocker. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Did you get hit in the head? No. Hey, what do you know about these dragons, huh? Well, I mean, the, everyone knows the dragons are... And you... Where are you from? I see you're, you're dressed as if you're from... Taggart, perhaps? Oh, well, I, uh, I serve no, Lady no First and worshiper. Foremost. Yeah, I serve Lady First and Foremost. Uh, but all, 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 I'm, I'm here for all of them, you know? Mm. Um, and it turns out that all of them used to be dragons. And mm-hmm. then, what do you know about the Blossom? Um, some people talk about the blossoming. It was a time uh, once the dragons gave magic. Some got sick with the magic. Uh, the dragons disappeared, and that's about it. The blossoming happened sometime after the dragons disappeared, and supposedly things are not the same. Strange creatures still show up now, and we don't see them as much as they used to be I guess books talk about some of the strange things that appear people with multiple arms that aren't supposed to be there fair enough um but what's if dragons can exist in the form of gods doesn't seem like anything's too crazy sure speaking of things that are a little bit outlandish I really appreciate your time Bishop and I just have uh, two more questions for you actually um one what and and i would and i would really appreciate your i would really appreciate you mm. being uh this just be a straight shooter with me um and i think as he says that he maybe like takes his blindfold off to look him in the eyes with his glow eyes not as like an intimidation but just like to really see him in that moment um what do you know about archbishop eclectus And he, he looks at you, and then he kind of looks back at that guy who greeted you. Um, what you don't see, and that everyone else in the podcast will, will see, Everybody but me. <laughs> is that that guy shakes his head slowly, no. And he says, uh, oh, I, uh, I, I don't think I know that name. Why, why is it? Uh, why is he important, or why are they so, important to you? So, slip of the tongue just, for him. Yeah, so, uh, I this may be my fault. We haven't talked about it. That's my dad's name. I I Did know that because yes, but that, okay. that is your father. Yes. Uh, okay. So he's the head of our religion. <laughs> So it would be strange if you didn't know his name. I'm afraid I I, I don't know. I <laughs> it's just not really ringing a bell. Maybe I've heard of it in a book or something, but... I think... Uh, hmm. I think that makes Lucian a little angry. And I don't know how that manifests itself. Take, take a second and think about it. Give me a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Put on your nice comfy slippers. They're sitting on like a pew, right? Is that? <laughs> yes. Imagine like sitting there at front and then whatever statues might be up front, uh, painted gold or very uh, elegant, but they're pretty large too. Uh, candles think, lit all about. I think that Lucian's gonna like be gripping the edge of the pew very tightly, like white knuckle tight. And I think that unwittingly, He's casting like inflict wounds, and I think that there's just this necrotic energy like pouring into the wood, and it's just like beginning to wither and decay and age very rapidly underneath of his 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 fist. And he goes, "Okay, um, then I just have one last question. Um, what do you know about his son?" He looks at you and he says, "Uh." 
He never had a son. And that's where we're in the episode. Hey everyone. Seems like we're on this kind of groove for finishing the episode. I just want to say thanks for listening. Pick it up! <laughs> uh, yeah, no, seriously, thanks everyone for listening. What I did not do last episode, and I will lead into right now, real quick, um, after Dwayne talks about his thing, will be a couple reviews that we have. Hey, if you want to support the show, um, you go to officer.org, you can purchase t shirt. You can even purchase a mask, which I really, man, I can't say enough about that mask. Like, I totally get the like pandemic's going down or whatever. Like, but if you gotta have a mask, like, it's really comfortable. Don't act like the pandemic Big isn't fan. just training for how great flu season's gonna be. We're gonna kick flu season's ass. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> But this is true. Um, with of so yeah, kidding. I mean, it's it's a uh, you can buy those, and then, then of course the baseball tees. Mm, the baseball tees are so good. We got two mm. people wearing them right now. There's so oh, three actually. My mm-hmm. best. I'm the only one not wearing one. <laughs> Thanks for the text, guys. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, you know I don't have company, regular t-shirts and podcasts. That's true. I that's have the true. sleeveless have baseball tees or baseball. And, and yeah, and then the, yeah, yeah. Because that's the only way uh, I can show character growth. That's true. That's true. That's why Atlas had so much growth. <laughs> to he show that I've journalist. grown as a character. <laughs> so, to show Christoph's growth. Uh, <laughs> You're better than me. I don't even wear shirts. Yeah, no. My character. So. Store.lovestupid.org. Thank you, Dwayne. Check it out. Um, I have the privilege of reading three, because I don't know if we read this one, and I'm really glad to get to. This is from GabbyGoo12. Uh, Was that all emojis again? No, no, no. Thank goodness. Uh, this is the horny ox did it for me. Uh, honestly was on the fence about the five stars until the C2 episode with the horny ox reference. Well done. Very funny. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. It was close. Um, next one. I'm still trying to s- s- track down yeah, that bit because I don't remember I it. I don't know that reference. I don't. So, if you're listening to yeah, this episode, Gabby 12. <laughs> Gabby 12, hit me up and tell me what episode it's in. Timestamp. Yeah, tweet at Time us. Timestamp would be ideal. Us. Yeah, whatever. Hashtag stupidcast. Christoph Shindo um, at gmail.com, the crew at lawfulstupid.org, Discord. Yeah, you could you could pay for a uh, message in a bottle. Message in a bottle so I can read your answer to me. Yeah. Yes. You could pay <laughs> for it. That'd be great. It <laughs> um what are those things they where they used to hang the messages on the like the poles and the trains would go by and like catch them as they I don't know what that is. That's what it'll be. It's it's, it's on the that website. It's called the welcome the packet. The welcome packet. Oh, that's, that's good. good. That's, yeah, that's good. <laughs> what? So we can get lost and never run? Yes. Um, yeah. No, they go to Devin, and that's why Miss B never gets them. I did not mm. get a packet. He's yeah. the male person we're looking for. Sick burn. Uh, next one's by he is all the NPC. D. Duper. Uh, five stars say so good, literally the best. Found you all in the middle of C2, binged all of C1, then C2, then C1. I guess like different seasons. Or just did it again. Can't get enough. I and think then, did it again. Aria of Red, five stars. I'm obsessed. Everything about this podcast is engaging, heartwarming, heart wrenching. Brings tears of joy and laughter. Makes you want to scream shouts of victory and defeat. Everyone involved in the creating this podcast gives so much to their community of listeners, and it's so wonderful. I have yet to be annoyed with anything that they have done. Just wait. Um, and if you choose to get more involved in the community, it just gets <laughs> that much better. In. They love interacting with their listeners. We do. To make the experience that much more personal, five stars. Definitely recommend listening. Uh, Sideways V, number three for a heart. Those are all Sideways right. V, I think you mean alligator mouth or less than symbol. Sideways V. <laughs> it's a new world chain. Whichever makes you happy. <laughs> I said what I said. Uh, uh, if you want to tell us all the fun, cute things and hear about all the uh, the news we like to spread out that happens in the Discord before sometimes it hits the podcast. Uh, come check out our Discord at discord.lawfulstupid.org. Because um, I would like to hear those praises besides in reviews in the mm. Discord. It makes yeah, me happy. Praise it warms me. my heart. Praise, praise me. me. Give me all the pennies. <laughs> One million pennies. No, this is the praise episode. Money episode was last time. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is just, just say nice <laughs> things about us. Give us a review. Uh, or tell me what you rolled in the Discord. You can go to the Discord. You can tell me what you rolled for your Roll for Humanity, your latest game. I'll tell you what I just rolled for Dots RPG. A 12. Oh, we rolled some last one, too. 
Mm. A couple twelves to round us out. It's not a bad showing, mm. all things told. Uh, so yeah, we love Dots RPG, and we appreciate everything they do, and we think it's a cause worthy of supporting, and so that's why we decided to support it this month. You should pick out the cause that means the most to you for you to support with your rolls for humanity, and then tell me what you rolled cowards. All right. The end. Um, the, Softly then. The good news story <laughs> for this week is uh, a 12 year old graduated high school and college in the same week. Dwayne? A 12 year old in a high school. No, just he, a 12 year old, he graduated high school and college in the same week. High school. Was working on college while he was working on yeah, high school. Yeah, hey, what they don't tell you is right? that um, there are less than seller make a wish foundation requests. Fucking hell. And that's that. Fucking was, <laughs> that hell. <laughs> that is fantastic, Dwayne. I don't even want to talk anymore. That was the best answer. Less than stellar. That's some actually of these kids, some of these kids suck so bad. <laughs> They're like, I just want to graduate college. <laughs> man, you could have been a superhero. You could have rode in Tony Stark's jet pants, man. Jet you could have done pants. anything. Uh, this is you could have been straight up a Spider-Man. Like, you could have done anything. But you were like, no, I'm going to graduate from college, but I want to put the work in, so put me through a week-long college course. Because I don't want to feel like it was just given to me. It's mostly just like uh, a 12-year-old or a 12-year-old playing beer pong <laughs> with some douches. <laughs> I just don't think it's, it's it should be surprising to anyone at all that the kid who invented time travel also graduated from Yale. Like, of course he did. This kid's Wait, smart but- as shit. If he's, if he's already inventing a time machine so that he can do this kind of shit... <laughs> It's, it's it's hell on the time space continuum. He's leaving holes everywhere. We will pay for that in a few years. But <laughs> fuck it, man. He did he did a cool thing. That's cool. That's future art. That's his problem. Oh, that's still probably going to be more than that. Yeah, but, but but don't but don't worry because he went back. He went back, back to the year nineteen forty three and opened and, and and opened up Nathan the savings Todd account dogs. with with half half a percent interest <laughs> and put like five dollars in there. And he's just fine now. See you nerds. <laughs> Eat the rich. Boomers should die. I don't you know. ever heard of Apple? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> well, he got he, he did a Biff Tannen and just bet on sporting events. <sighs> yeah. Hey Bond, you want to touch that Deep one? Cut. Deep cut. No, I'm not going to touch that one. That's about a kid. (laughs) Yeah, a -a Make-A-Wish kid. You can't make fun of a -a Make-A-Wish kid. Yeah, come on. No. All right, we found (laughs) Avon's boundaries. If nothing else, I'm happy for that in this episode. (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody. (laughs) Till next time. We love you. What boundary can we discover next week? What line can we cross? (laughs) Farewell.